In 1942, German soldiers attacked the Soviet village of Grin. They burnt down the entire village, but little did they know that a kind neighbor had helped six-year-old Sergei Aleshkov escape into the surrounding forest. Having lost his family recently because of the Germans, a scared Sergei is all alone in the world, left wandering in the forest. With time, he learns to survive on his own in the forest. He ensures that he hides from German troops, is able to make temporary footwear for himself, procures sustenance from nature, and even before friend's animals. Several months go by before he is discovered by scouts of the Soviet army who then take him to their commander, Nikolai Kuznetsov. Collectively pained by the malnourishment of the kid and the tragedy of his life and massively impressed by his determination to keep living, the unit adopts him and the cook, Petrovich, even gets him food. While the troops then request for some clothes in Sergei's size, he is provided medical assistance in the military infirmary. He wins over the nurse taking care of him, Katya, and even a couple of the patients there with his adorable presence. But nobody is more smitten with him than Commander Kuznetsov himself. While visiting the rest of his wounded troops, he spends some time with Sergei and motivates him to get better soon. When Katya suggests that they keep him with them at the front, Kuznetsov is against the idea. She informs him that since Sergei lost his father before the war and the rest of his family during the war, he had nobody else to return to. She says that once he fully recovers and has to leave, he would have to be sent to an orphanage if they didn't find a way to keep him with them. Intending to keep Sergei out of the orphanage, Katya even assures the commander that she will take care of him and everyone else will help as well. However, the commander tells her not to get too attached and says that Sergei will have to go when he gets better. On the other hand, unable to resist little Sergei's charms, troops continue to visit him and shower him with gifts. When he is given a pair of binoculars, he is beyond excited at the prospect of being able to carefully monitor the surroundings for potential threats. The commander's orderly, Rezo, even gets him a tasty dessert to enjoy. Late that night, Katya discusses with another nurse how the arrival of Sergei has deeply affected her. She says that she has seen plenty of wounded soldiers since the war started and has never cried over any of them. But when it comes to Sergei, she feels like she should keep him hidden away from the evils of war, so he never sees any of it. She even expresses her fear of when Kuznetsov will let Sergei go to an orphanage and she won't be able to see him again. The next day, Igor Maximovich requests the commander on behalf of the entire regiment to keep Sergei with them. He tells him that everyone misses their children back home, and seeing Sergei reminds them all of why they were fighting the war with the Germans. He promises that everyone will contribute to looking after him if only Kuznetsov could find a way to let him be with the regiment instead of letting him go to an orphanage. Repeating what he told Katya earlier, the commander angrily tells Igor that none of his seniors will allow such a young child to be at the front. Additionally, he also says that Sergei shouldn't get attached to everyone since he will ultimately have to go to an orphanage after the war anyway. He says that he has already forwarded Sergei's information and documents, so everyone should ID ideally stop hoping to keep him around. With the war in full force, nobody visits Sergei for a while until the day arrives when he has to leave for the orphanage. Completely recovered but still wearing clothes and shoes that are too big for him, Sergei is told by Commander Kuznetsov that the orphanage had sent a car for him to get there safely. He then gives Sergei a wooden toy that replicates his own weapon so he can remember him. Overcome with emotions, Sergei hugs him and tells him that he was scared when the commander didn't visit. Realizing that Sergei had come to really care for him already, Kuznetsov asks him if he would want to be called his son. He tells him that they can give it a try so they won't have to be separated immediately. In celebration of the news, the regiment gets to work modifying a uniform and a pair of shoes to his size. Kuznetsov wakes Sergei up the next morning and tells him that a real soldier gets dressed within the time it takes for a single match to be completely burnt down. As pleased at finally having a uniform of his own, Sergei is still unable to change into it even after burning down multiple matches. However, he still takes a victory lap around the regiment in his new uniform and shoes and is appreciated by everyone. Just then, a sudden air raid causes the commander to get Sergei to hide in a dugout. Later, he goes around looking for Katya, as well as the commander, but is unable to find either of them. Seeing him running around scared and worried, a doctor suggests that he should help wherever he can, instead of thinking about anything else. Obedient as ever, Sergei then gets water to the wounded soldiers. Not knowing how to read, Sergei then smartly narrates a pretty picture when asked to read the soldiers their letters from home, thereby making everyone feel better about not just the situation in general, but also their condition. He even goes on to sing them a song to boost their morale. When when things calm down later, Sergei asks the commander whom he needs to thank for making him his perfect uniform. Showing him a bombed location, 
The commander replies that gratitude needs to be immediately expressed especially in times of war, or you end up being too late and miss your timing. Over time, Sergei picks up tiny, orderly duties to keep up with his honorary soldier title. Bringing joy to the troops, he proudly and happily delivers their mail and even goes scouting in the forest with his binoculars. On one such day, he comes across someone hiding in a haystack and promptly goes looking for Andre since he was the one who got him the binoculars. Insisting that he really saw someone suspicious, he gets Andre and a few others to check the haystack and even insists that he should accompany them. When they get there, it is revealed that the haystack was indeed being used by German spotters to hide and keep a watch. Andre and the others tackle them and successfully capture them while Sergei retrieves their transmitter. He then happily continues on his way to deliver mail to the soldier who always dances when Sergei demands. However, that day he is disappointed since the war had unfortunately taken away that soldier. Meanwhile, the commander receives a report about the German infiltrators, who were caught because of Sergei's presence of mind. Just then, he gets there himself to report that he had finished delivering the mail to everyone. The proud commander then shows him the adoption papers that finally came through, which meant that Sergei was legally his son now. During another raid a few days later, Sergei's orderly duties expand to include delivering ammunition during combat. Successfully delivering the parcel to Igor in the trenches, Sergei is ordered to safely get back to the commander's dugout. Once there, he hears that their on-field telephone connection has been broken and the commander needs it promptly fixed. When nobody was looking at him, Sergei grabbed the opportunity to sneak out of the dugout and proceeded to follow the cable out through the trenches and into the field. He ultimately reaches the broken end of the cable and finds an injured soldier there. He then requests the soldier to guide him regarding the cable and what he can do to fix it. Perfectly following his instructions, Sergei then successfully joins the cable for a connection back to the commander. Another day, Sergei rushes to Katya and tells her that the commander is seriously ill and that he can neither eat nor sleep. Hurrying with her through the forest and to the commander's dugout, he slips out and hides to listen to their conversation. Thinking he was really ill, Katya woke the commander up to check when he told her to stop the fuss as he was perfectly fine. Realizing that Sergei was up to some trouble, the commander apologized to Katya, determined to say what he has been actually trying to say for quite a while. The commander follows Katya out when she leaves and continues in her pursuit through the forest. When she finally reaches the riverbank, the commander gathers his courage and asks Katya to be Sergei's mother. Before she can give him a definite answer, the commander receives orders from the headquarters to leave for Stalingrad the next day. On the way there, when the regiment stops for food, they discover a German air bomb below a house patched up by the villagers because of Sergei's curious mind. Back on the road later, their car goes over a mine causing the commander to be injured. Yet again, Sergei witnesses the cruel face of the war when they lose Reza. The commander's real orderly. When they meet another platoon, Commander Kuznetsov speaks to the general and requests for replacement supplies of uniforms and shoes for everyone. When the general replies that the process could take a while since supply trucks had slowed down due to the Germans blocking their route, the commander orders Sergei to look into the inspection of the uniforms of all the gathered platoons. Following his commander's orders, Sergei then adorably lines everyone up to inspect for old and worn shoes. He gets one of the commanders to write everyone's name since he can't write them himself, and then very responsibly submits his report directly to the general. Much to Kuznetsov's surprise and pride, Sergei even asks the general's permission for Commander Kuznetsov to get married to Katya. Later, when Commander Kuznetsov's regiment is awarded the Honorable Guards banner, the Soviet army doesn't forget to include Sergei. Everyone looks on proudly as Sergei receives his medal and thinks of all the times the kid had come through with his sincere help on and off the field. One such time was before they were awarded the Guards banner, when Commander Kuznetsov was buried in a trench during an incident of bombardment. When Sergei realized that he couldn't do much to help his father and commander, he found help for him just in time instead. Meeting him in the infirmary later, Sergei had cried seeing Commander Kuznetsov's heavily injured state. The film ends with information about Sergei being awarded a medal for battle valor, as he had not only accompanied his regiment in the Battle of Stalingrad, but had also bravely advanced to Poland with them. In this way, he, Sergei Aleshkov, successfully found himself a new family after having lost his first family to the war. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Stay tuned for more exciting videos.